Well, that was something. Welcome back, friends. Happy Monday, post Ian Monday. I'm shooting this on Friday, so it has been a little over a week since the big hurricane. The first thing I want to do is thank every one of you that reached out or tried to reach out. Uh, concerned about my well-being. I really appreciate it. I don't know that I got back to all of you. I hope I did, but uh, consider this a blanket uh, thank you and that I'm okay. I've thought uh, a long time about how to best describe this storm, and I think it's it's kind of like, first of all, I want to say I was really lucky, unbelievably lucky. So it'll make more sense when I say that when I try to describe this, it's kind of like asking someone what a car accident was like who wasn't in the car accident and didn't see the car accident, really, just saw the aftermath. And I will explain. So Wednesday is when everybody kind of was either gone or buckled down and prepared to ride this thing out. The storm had been tracking and we had been watching it for the you know 10 at least 10 days. And everybody kept saying it's gonna hit Tampa, it's gonna hit Tampa. Well, it may be north of Tampa. No, it's gonna hit Tampa. And by the time they ordered the evacuation notice for where I live, it was really kind of too late to do anything. We could have gotten in the car and drove over to Fort Lauderdale, but by then there were tornadoes popping up left and right along uh, 75. And so we just stayed. we were on the bleeding edge of that storm. So it certainly got windy. Um, we lost power at about 3.30 on Friday afternoon. And the power didn't come back on until late, late Friday night. Again, I know somebody up in Port Charlotte that still doesn't have power. Um, so, you know, the one of the issues was this was a big storm and it moved very slowly um and it just took it took all day once on radar the storm was kind of past us and onto land is when it got kind of spooky uh i was at my mom's and we were sitting on the back porch, enclosed back porch. And there's a lake behind her house. And at one point I said, I looked like, I don't know, five or six lots up and I said, it looks like somebody's running a sump pump. And I had been told not, I don't know, 15 minutes before that my lot was dry, there was no water on my lot. And my mom's husband said, that's, that's, not a, that's not a pump. And a couple minutes later, there was another stream of water a couple lots down, and then another, and then another. And that was the storm surge. And about 20 or 30 minutes after I was told that my lot was dry, I said, I think I want to go check on the store. The water at that point on the street was up to, I don't know what you call it, the, the bottom of the door. And it was mid-calf deep 
in my lot. At that point, I decided that maybe I better just stay because I thought if I get out, I'm, I may be able to get out, but I, I don't know that I'll be able to get back in. Um, so, I mean, at home, there was really no damage. Uh, the, it was, you know, I, we had about, I don't know, four or five inches of water in the shed and I, you know, lost a bag of Traeger pellets. The store was kind of the same way. For whatever reason, this strip mall sits about a, a foot above the street level. You kind of have to drive up into it. Um, there was a little bit of water on the floor to mop up. Um, I didn't get power back into the store until well, I came in that following Monday and their power was back on at the store. A block away, that store was swamped. I mean, they're pulling up floorboards and I mean, it's a, and the people that live around here, I mean, lost everything. Uh, down on uh, Bay Shore, where there's a kayak shop and a, and a brewery and a bunch of other businesses, I mean, again, a lot of them, total loss. So when I say I was fortunate, I want you to understand, <laughs> unbelievably fortunate. So it's, you know, it's a little strange. I mean, the Naples Pier, which is kind of one of the iconic landmarks of, of Naples is basically gone. The pilings are still there, but most of the, the pier is gone. I think that I read somewhere after I first moved here that that got taken out by a hurricane like 135 years ago and they rebuilt it then, and it had stood there since then, and they'll rebuild it again. Um, there's some geodesic domes off of Marco Island, just south of here, and those were built, I think, back in the 60s. Some guy built a house out there, and there were six of them initially. One of them got, the, this, the gulf just took, one of them a hurricane got several years ago, and the, so there were four left, and those are gone now. So everywhere you look, I mean, it was kind of carnage. Um, but somehow, very lucky, very lucky. I can tell you one thing that uh, I think some remedial driver's ed is... Uh, needed because no one seems to know what to do when a traffic light is out, when it's flashing red or flashing yellow. They either don't know or they know and they don't care. So that's, that's my story from Hurricane Ian. I know that uh, talking to many of you, you know, the news and the Weather Channel, I mean, it's disaster porn. They love to show the most awful stuff over and over and over again, and unfortunately, there was a lot of that. But for me, not so much. So again, thank you to everyone that was concerned. Rest at ease. Uh, I've got a couple of, I had a couple of soggy cardboard boxes, but other than that, uh, we're s still in business. And next week, hopefully, we'll be back to bikes. If you see one last thing for my regulars, uh, YouTube's got a new thing where, you know, they're pushing shorts, these little videos that are up to 60 seconds long. They've got a, a new feature, relatively new feature, where you can take existing videos and cut out a little chunk of it and post it as a short. So you're likely going to see some of those uh, here going forward, trying to pull some new viewers into the channel. Uh, so if you wonder why you're seeing something that you already saw, that's why. Again, thank you.
I hope something good happens to you today.